Hello, I'm Dr. Jeff Smith. Thanks for taking the time to watch this webinar and video with us today. I hope you'll learn something from our video, from the information we're going to share with you, and I hope you can use it to help change your life. That's what we're trying to do, and we've been successful in doing that for over 23 years in our clinics. We have three clinics in Arkansas, one operating in Northwest Arkansas and Bentonville, one in Little Rock, Arkansas, in the central part of the state, and one down in Hot Springs, Arkansas, which is everybody's favorite. I'm Dr. Jeff Smith. I'm the lead educator for NWA Advanced Medical. Here's a couple of our websites, nwajointpain.com. You can go to that website and learn about the type of injection therapy we're talking about today. You can also go to nwamedicalaesthetics.com. We have a medical aesthetics website that deals with things like uh, Botox and aesthetics type use for patients to make ourselves look pretty and feel good. Uh, again, I'm Dr. Jeff Smith, and thank you for watching this video. Thank you for taking the time. Please write down notes, write down questions. Anything you want to ask us or send to us, please call or email. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. So why do we do joint injection therapy? Well, the science behind it simply works. We've conducted over 3,200 cases so far successfully. This is why we do what we do. These are pictures of knee joints. The little space you see between the knee joints is where the cartilage should be. Now, as we get injured or whatever over time, we tend to lose that cartilage between our joints. Could be a shoulder, could be a hip, could be a knee, could be even a finger or an ankle. When we lose that cartilage space, that little shadow that's in there, those bones tend to want to kind of rub and grind together. That causes a lot of inflammation, a lot of swelling, a lot of pain a lot of decreased function and decreased range of motion, and that's what people are running around hobbled with all the time. The reason we do what we do in our clinic is because we can look at a joint like this, even a joint like this, it looks like there's almost no space left. Most of our patients are told, you're bone on bone, there's no other option other than joint replacement therapy. And almost every patient that wants to be a patient of ours is telling us we're trying to avoid that. So we're going to talk about that today. We can take x-rays that look like this with almost little to no space and with therapeutic and joint injection therapy we can get x-rays like this with much larger openings in about a 90 day period of time. And after 90 days the neat part is that's just the beginning of the process. It continues to do this for about 12 months. This is why we do what we do, because we can take knees like this or joints like this and with our therapy help the patient regain some functionality and potentially avoid joint replacement surgery altogether. I've had hundreds and thousands of patients tell us they were told they're bone on bone. These knees are not actually bone on bone because we can still see a space right here and we can still see a space right here. To be truly bone on bone, you can't have any visible space left either on the inside or the outside of the joint. And if that's the case, you certainly didn't walk in this office because you can't walk or let alone stand on a truly bone on bone joint. We've seen over 36,000 patients in our clinic over 23 years, and I have seen one, exactly one bone on bone knee joint. And that person was wheeled in our office in a wheelchair because you can't walk around like that. So why do people get told they're bone on bone? Well, if we tell you you're bone on bone, nothing left but surgery, we're trying to do this to you, okay? We're here to talk about some alternatives to that, to see if we can put that off, avoid it, whatever. But that's what we're here to talk about today. Many of our patients come to us and they've had cortisone or steroid injections. Now, cortisone and steroid injections can be good when utilized properly. The problem with them is this. Boston University came out and published this study. It was published October 21st, 2019. Their research finally showed, which is something we knew all along, but it finally proved that cortisone repeated steroid injections in the same joint. Let's say you keep getting the same steroid shot in the same shoulder joint. Repeated injections accelerate arthritis and joint destructions, which can necessitate or cause knee and hip replacements. Yeah, you heard that right. If you keep putting a steroid in the same joint over time, the steroid is so powerful, it'll actually eat the joint up and speed up the need to replace your joint. So why do people get told this? Well, steroids 
do cause anti-inflammation, which relieves swelling and inflammation, but it doesn't fix anything. You ever kind of wondered why the first steroid shot worked pretty good, gave you some good movement and lasted for a while? By the time you had that second steroid shot, it didn't work as well, didn't last as long. And by the third one, it barely worked at all. That's because the steroid's actually eating your joint up. And all we're doing is speeding up the need to cut or do surgery on you. Most doctors don't tell their patients this information. It's readily available. But it was kind of neat that Boston University came out. It was on headline news in October of 2019. Came out and said this finally. They just let the cat out of the bag. So for those of you that have steroid shots and keep having them in the same joint in your body, ask your doctor these questions because that steroid could actually be harming you over time. Arkansas did something really, really cool. This happened April 10th of 2017. We passed a law called the Arkansas Emerging Therapies Act. This law was enacted because one of our congressmen or governor's wives, I can't remember which, maybe Senator, um, had therapeutic joint injection therapy done years ago. And it worked so well for them, they thought we need to make this available to the state of Arkansas. So they passed this act in April 10th of 2017. What this law was trying to do was provide an alternative to patients in Arkansas. Now, originally this was only for people that actually worked for the state of Arkansas. So, you know, teachers, firefighters, police officers, whatever. Arkansas is one of two states that didn't fully participate in the little thing called Obamacare. So we had to look for ways as a state to save money. We had to figure out how to save money in healthcare for our state because of that. What they did was they researched these types of injections and found we could save the state $100 million every year. Instead of just operating and replacing joints, using therapeutic joint injections instead, we'll save the state of Arkansas $100 million. It's an 80% savings in surgery cost, virtually absent absent of complications. When we inject a patient, we put a Band-Aid on them and tell them to go walk around Walmart for 10 or 15 minutes. That's literally what we do. That's the, that's the complication of it, okay? I'm very proud of Arkansas for passing this law because usually all the new stuff comes to the East Coast like Cal or New York and, and the West Coast like California first. Everything in the Midwest comes last, but I'm really proud of Arkansas because we finally did something first before anybody else. So. Pretty awesome law. It's my understanding that this a similar law is passed in Texas, and it's actually on the books in Kansas, Missouri, and Oklahoma as well. So the information is spreading. What we're sharing is spreading and getting out there. Our clinic uh, was able to perform, in conjunction with the University of Arkansas, one of their head researchers, uh, a research study based on this type of therapy. We published these results in February of 2019. It's available online. We'd be happy to send it to you. But it was kind of neat. We partnered with them so that we could research these injections and produce this study, and it produced amazing results. Again, they're available online to see. I encourage you to do it. Advanced therapeutics are the future of medicine. They are the future. They can be used to help with things like bone loss, heart problems. Mayo Clinic was able to regrow a heart valve for a baby born a couple years ago that was born without a heart valve. They use this type of therapy to regrow the heart valve for the baby. If you know anybody that's had liver problems like a diagnosis of cirrhosis, that can actually be a death sentence for, this, for those patients. There are alternatives now available to help. Intestinal problems like Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, typically what they do there is they cut out about a three foot section of your intestine and just sew the other two ends back together. There are alternatives available today now, not in the future, they're available today. And Mayo Clinic has done some research just recently on using these types of injections to help rebuild neurons and, and neuroblastomas in the, in the brain, tissues in the brain dealing with Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, and multiple sclerosis. And the findings thus far in their research is great, it's fantastic. We don't do any of these types of things, obviously, so don't ask us for that. We just deal with joint problems. But these are the types of things available now 
not in the future, now. It's amazing, the technology. Therapeutic joint injection is one of the biggest medical breakthroughs in natural healing. Why do we use the word natural? Well, we don't use drugs or medications for this. The tissues are either donated or they're utilized from your own body, but they're not drugs or they're not being created in labs. That's why it's natural. And we can use the term natural for this because of that very fact. We're not combining a bunch of chemicals together to make something. It's natural. Therapeutic joint injections are typically utilized for things like chronic pain, chronic disease, knee pain, hip pain, arthritis, joint problems, those types of things. Um, we see a lot of knee problems, a lot of knee problems. A lot of bone people that are told they're bone on bone but aren't really truly bone on bone. We get a lot of those in. Um, elbow problems. I recently had an injection for what's called tennis elbow. I don't know how in the world you can call something tennis elbow if you don't play tennis and get it, but I don't play tennis and I got ended up with tennis elbow. And we tried all kinds of therapy on it first. We tried ultrasound therapy, laser therapy, rehab, physical therapy, exercise. None of it would help. I finally just got one of these injections in my elbow. Three weeks later, I could use it and had no pain. Foot and ankle problems, wrist problems, a lot of carpal tunnel issues, a lot of shoulders and rotator cuff tears. We've done so many of those to help patients. Shoulder surgery, if you ever have to have, if you ever actually have to have shoulder replacement surgery, it's one of the toughest surgeries to get over or to overcome. It's so tough. The shoulder muscles are kind of laid on top of each other like an onion. There's different layers but they all run in different, the muscles run in different directions and they gotta cut all of that open. Imagine cutting down into an, an onion and opening it up to try and get to the middle, fixing it, and then sewing all those layers back together. Shoulder surgery is tough. We see a lot of spinal problems as well. Here's an interesting thing. About nine out of 10 of the patients that come into our clinic and have back pain or back problems, in about nine out of 10 cases, the problem is not really the lower back, it's the hips and the pelvis, because your hips and your pelvis are your support structure for your lower back. If your support structure doesn't work properly, nothing above that area is gonna work properly either. So we've been able to help patients that have had back surgeries that have failed them by treating or helping deal with the pelvis and hips, because that's what stabilizes and holds the back up, that's your support structure. And of course, we deal with a lot of hip issues as well. A lot of people like to do research, and, and that's great. We encourage that. Okay, obviously, do your research. But be smart about it. Don't just go to Google and type in stuff, right? Because if you look up therapeutic joint injections, you're going to get about 51,800,000 pages to read. That's a lot to read. Let me give you a website that you can look up. This is called PubMed.com, and the information contained on this website is actual, real studies and data and information from veritable and trusted sources. So if you want to look up anything medically related, go to that website and look it up because you can trust what that website tells you. A lot of famous athletes over the years have used therapeutic joint injections. One of the very first that we know of that used this type of therapy was a fellow by the name of Bart Starr. I believe he did it 15 or 16 years ago, uh, but he had to go to Mexico for it because it wasn't available here in the United States. Peyton Manning, Kobe Bryant, Alex Rodriguez, everybody heard of Kobe obviously because he tragically passed away. But these are people that have been proponents of this type of injection therapy because like many athletes, they can't afford to be injured or off their job because they don't get paid when they're not on their job. So if they can get an injection like a therapeutic joint injection with an injury and avoid having a surgery, the recovery time is so much faster that they get to get back on the roster and play again that means their paychecks are back on as well. So Jack Nicholas, Steph Curry, Tiger Woods. Tiger was an interesting one. Uh, he had two failed back surgeries. Uh, it was literally out of golf, unable to play golf. 
He had to have a third back surgery, but when they did, they partnered with a, a clinic that was able to help during the, the surgical procedure provide therapeutic joint injection therapy as well. It healed so fast that he actually went on to win just a few months after that surgery, a green jacket. He won the masters that year after two and a third failed back surgeries. The guy won the, won the masters with the help of therapeutic joint injection therapy. That's why we do this, but we don't have to be famous athletes to be able to have access to this therapy. It's available to you and to me today. It's available to us. We don't need to make $10 million a year playing sports. We may just wanna get down on the ground and play with our grandkids. We may wanna play around the golf with our son or daughter, or we wanna play tennis or do, walk and exercise with your spouse. These are basic things that you and I deserve to be able to do ourselves. And this therapy can help make that a possibility. How do we determine if a patient is a candidate? Well, first of all, we do a case history. Now, everybody loves this, I'm sure. When you go to a new doctor, you gotta fill out paperwork, you gotta write all this stuff out. It takes forever, and it's, you get a cramp in your hand, it's no fun. But why do we make you do that? Well, here's an example. When we partnered with the University of Arkansas Research Department early on when we started doing this type of therapy four years ago, their research department was able to tell us what types of medications, over-the-counter drugs, prescription drugs, even natural things like vitamins and supplements, what kind of those things can actually damage this injection. So we have to know that ahead of time because we have to educate our patients what to do prior to the injections so they don't damage the injections. So for instance, some of you may take things like Advil for your pain or inflammation or, or um, ibuprofen or Aleve, right? Those are all things that can help with pain and inflammation, right? But they'll damage this injection if you're taking them. What about natural things? I have five degrees, one of them's in nutrition, right? How about omega-3 fatty acids? omega-3, 6, and 9, fish oils, uh, ginger root, green tea. Uh, some people take turmeric and curcumin for, turmeric and curcumin for anti-inflammation, even aloe vera. Those are all very helpful things, very good for your body, but they're too strong of an antioxidant and they can damage this shot. Does anybody take meloxicam for pain relief? Meloxicam will damage this shot. However, we also have a list of things that are totally fine to take with this shot. So for instance, tramadol doesn't have a negative effect on this shot. So I promise you, if you're taking something that will damage this injection, your physician or our medical team can help coordinate with you an alternative that will suffice and not damage these injections. We have to know that ahead of time and we partner with our patients to do that. We also x-ray our patients, but we do it a little differently. For those of you that have had x-rays or an MRI, for instance, and when you lay down on a table for an MRI, you lay down flat, all of your joints and all of your bones just relax. Well, we can't measure any of them if they've relaxed like that. So we make you stand. We have to take a picture of you standing, and we use a little thing called gravity, and gravity pushes all our joints together that way we can properly measure the spaces between the bones down to a hundredth of a millimeter. And when we re-x-ray our patient 90 days later, we take him in the exact same posture, standing in the exact same position so we can re-measure the joint space to see if there's been any improvement. We also require blood work or labs on our patients. Um, it's my understanding a lot of clinics don't, but we do, and here's why. You wanna look for things in blood work that might interfere with the injection's successfulness. But even so much so, people don't always completely fill out honestly their case history. I'll give you an example. We had a patient one time that came in and was wanting to get an injection and they were determined they were a good candidate. So we scheduled a procedure. They came in for the procedure and, and said, uh, my doctor put me on a steroid yesterday for a sinus infection whoa steroids are so powerful that we can't give a steroid injection 
with one of our injections for six weeks because it would damage or destroy the injection. So blood work is taken because blood work doesn't lie, <laughs> all right? So if you're not completely honest with your case history or you don't remember everything you're putting in your body, your blood work can show us those things you don't remember. So that's why we require it. We also do a medical evaluation. These four things have to be done prior to a patient being determined as a candidate. And we charge absolutely nothing for this. It's completely free. We will examine you, take your x-rays, we'll coordinate your blood test with your doctor, or just get an older blood test to look at. But this whole process takes about 15 minutes, totally free to you, no obligation, but that's how we determine if a patient is a good candidate or not. How long will the actual injection last? Studies have shown us that therapeutic joint injection can help the body with those healing properties for a period of about 12 months total. Now, we require all of our patients to return to the clinic and be re-x-rayed at 90 days as the first follow-up post uh, uh, x-ray procedure, okay? Because by 90 days, we should have two things, subjective improvement and objective improvement. Subjective means the patient says, you know, I feel better, I move better, I have more mobility, my range of motion is better, whatever. But we have to know if that's truly the case or not because the patient just telling us that isn't enough. So we will actually re-x-ray the patient and re-measure those spaces. And we can do that down to a hundredth of a millimeter. That's how narrow we can measure those spaces. And if it's showing improvement at 90 days, it tell, it's telling us that the therapy is doing its job. And then we will partner with you or instruct you on what to do for the actual next nine months as it continues to help improve your quality of life. Side effects. Well, it is an injection, so the side effects are very consistent with any other injection. You know, there's always the possibility of an infection or bleeding, but we take very, very precise precautions to help negate any of those opportunities. We don't want any reactions for our patients whatsoever. Uh, I believe the needles that are used are actually smaller than smaller gauge than the needles used in a typical steroid injection. Uh, when I had my knees injectioned, I, I was sitting on a table and uh, the injection specialist uh, put a little pin mark on my kneecap, or right, right by the inside of my knee, I think it was, uh, and marked where she was going to inject me. Uh, and then she sprayed some sort of a, uh, I'm not sure what it is, I call it magical fairy dust, but it's a spray that's really cold and it numbs the skin. And then I'm talking with her, just sitting there, and I see her kind of playing with a Band-Aid. And I said, oh, that's my Band-Aid for after my shot. When are you going to do the shot? And she said, I'm already done. I'm just putting your Band-Aid on. So the procedure itself is almost completely painless. I didn't feel a darn thing. And I've had five of these injections so far myself. I've had both my knees done, had my elbow done, had a, um, a heel done because I had a crack in my heel that wouldn't heal properly. And the very first one I got four years ago was in this thumb because of arthritis. And now... I have full range of motion and no pain whatsoever, and it's been four years for me. So typically, you need a Band-Aid. Sometimes we give you Snoopy, sometimes Looney Tunes, but that's it. And then we want you to walk around. We tell people literally, go walk around Walmart for 10 or 15 minutes. Move the joint that they inject so that that medication or that fluid that's in there that they put in the injection can spread out to the whole joint and have an effect on the whole area. This is obviously what a knee replacement looks like. You can see the metal, but what happens to the other side? If you replace this one, what happens to the other one? Well, your brain knows if my body has an artificial knee joint or hip joint on this side, my brain knows that that side was replaced and it will shift my body weight to the other side. It doesn't ask me, my brain just does that. And so if I shift my weight from this one to this one, well, now this one's going to wear out on me. And unfortunately, it wears out much faster than the other side. So in a lot of cases, when we have a patient come in that says both knees or both hips hurt me, but this one hurts more, in a lot of those cases, the side that hurts less is actually worse because your brain is shifting the weight away from that side. And so the side that hurts more may not be quite as bad as the other side. We see that all the time.
All right, we're going to show you some of some of the x-rays that we've collected over the years. Um, some of these are actually our patients. We have their permission to show these, and none of their names, of course, are on there. But these procedures are real people. These are, these are real patients, the patients that may be sitting in the same lecture hall as you right now or watch the same video you watched. Please bear in mind, we're not trying to influence you with these pictures. These are real human beings, so please keep that in mind. These are x-rays of knee joints. These are before the injections. This is 90 days or three months later. The space that you see here is the thickness of that cartilage space. We measured this one to 1.87 and this one to 1.49 millimeters. 90 days later, it measured 4.13 and 5.42. That was the change 90 days post-injection. Here's another one. You can see right here, the space measures is really narrow. There's just a little tiny sliver of space. It only measured 1.84 millimeters. 90 days later, it measured 4.12 millimeters. That patient's 84 years old. Age doesn't matter. Age doesn't matter. We had, we had a patient driven from Nashville, Tennessee, all the way to our Arkansas clinic, a 15 hour drive. Her two daughters brought her. Her knees were both pretty bad. She passed the, the, the criteria to determine if she was a candidate, so they performed the procedure on her. 90 days later, we require all of our patients to come back to get re-x-rayed and examined. Uh, but however, her daughters didn't want to drive her 15 hours again just for an x-ray. So we had her medical doctor, her primary doctor, re-x-ray the knees, and then they mailed us the results. What we saw was an astounding 300 plus percent improvement in those joints. But the most astounding thing was the lady was 101 years old. So age doesn't matter in these injections to that extent. Here's another knee. This person was told they were bone on bone. Well, yeah, right there they were bone on bone, but not there. And so this is what we will start to see three months or 90 days post injection. You can actually see the joint starting to expand. Here's the before picture here. Here's the after picture here, 90 days again. This was a neat story. Um, this was a 47 year old veteran. My dad is a Vietnam veteran, so I have a lot of respect for veterans. But at age 47, this is what his knee looked like. He had almost no joint space left. He was hobbled, he couldn't work, couldn't hold a job was supposed to be taking care of his family, the VA had hooked him on Oxycontin and Oxycodone. Well, when the government decided that Oxycodone and Oxycontin is killing everybody, and it is, it's killing people, they decided to take it away from our veterans. The problem was with this individual, they didn't wean him slowly off of it or give him an alternative, they just took it away. You can't go from Oxycontin to nothing. The next closest drug that these people have to go find that's close enough to Oxycontin is sadly heroin. So when we saw this individual, he hobbled into our office in tears. After we injected him 90 days later, that's what the 3M stands for. We actually took the picture with our cell phone. 90 days later, his knee was fully healed. Not only that, he had a job and was able to work and function in society again. Believe me, we shared a couple tears on this x-ray day as well, but they were tears of happiness for this fellow. Here's another joint. You can see how the bones kind of grind together right there. What kind of sensation would you expect if bones rub together? In other words, if they're starting to do that, well, you'll get something called crepidus where you can have a little grinding sensation. Or, or bones rubbing together, well, that causes swelling, that causes inflammation. And if you're on that joint all day long, all that swelling and inflammation, when you go to bed at night, that swelling and inflammation will stiffen and harden. So what happens is first thing the next morning when you wake up, that joint barely moves because all that swelling that you caused the day before is actually hardened up and stiff. So you need some, some WD-40 to loosen it up. But you can see how that joint went from rubbing together to 2.7 millimeters apart, a 270% improvement. Here's another one. This is the before picture here. 
This is 90 days later. Here's another one. This, this lady had a knee replacement. She went to her doctor and they told her you needed another knee replacement. They were going to replace her other knee. The problem was she's 88 years old and lived by herself. Well, who was going to take care of her when she was recovering from a second knee surgery? They didn't care. They were just going to do it anyway. So she came to us. She wanted to avoid that. We measured her joint space at 1.12 millimeters. 90 days post injection, it measured 3.83 millimeters. It had tripled, tripled in size. This is a progression of measurements over a six month period of time. So zero, three, and six months. So this is the measurement before. That's 90 days after injections. That's 180 days. You can kind of just see the progression as it goes. Here's what a rotator cuff looks like. Now, a rotator or a shoulder looks like that. We should have a ball and we should have a socket and the ball joint should fit right in the center of the socket. It shouldn't be like that, shouldn't be like that, and it really shouldn't be like that. If you look, you can see way too much space here, but none at the bottom. Because that ball joint, because of some tearing in the shoulder and the anterior and lateral portions, was sitting like that and it was grinding in the socket. 90 days after the injection, you can see an equal space all the way around that joint. The ball joint had literally moved back into the middle portion of that socket. Here's an example of a lower back problem. This patient had two failed back surgeries and their back was bent at an 18.8 degrees to the left. In other words, the lower back was leaning 18.8 degrees this way. When we x-rayed this patient, we realized that both the hips were just shot, just terrible. But the doctors that she saw before never looked at her hips. They just focused on the back. Well, like we talked about before, your hips and pelvis are the support structure for the back. So if the hips and pelvis are bad, everything above that's going to be bad. We only injected the hips. We didn't touch the lower back. And 90 days later, they were only bent 7.2 degrees. In other words, the back had started to straighten itself out by treating the hips and the pelvis, not the lumbar spine. Here's another example. Those hip measurements were 0 0.5 and 0 0.4, not even a whole millimeter. 90 days later, that was 2.01 and 1.91. By the way, that's just a zipper. The patient didn't swallow something. <laughs> I had that question, kind of a funny one. You can see an example here. This is what a bulging or a herniated disc looks like. This space right here is very narrow compared to all the rest. And these dark holes, those are the holes that the nerve comes off the spine runs down your butt cheek and down your leg. So for those of you that experience sciatica pain or neuropathy or spinal stenosis, look at the size of these holes and then look at that one right there and look how narrow that space is there. Now look how wide and how big that hole is 90 days post treatment, only 90 days. Okay, how do I make an appointment? Well, if you're watching this video, you've seen this phone number here at the bottom all the time. We have a hotline, you're welcome to call at any point in time. Call that number and you can schedule. Just tell them you watch the online webinar video or the DVD that we offer. We'll have this on a DVD version as well. And you would like to have the free evaluation, completely free, no obligation, to see if you would be a good candidate or not. If you'd like to send an email, feel free to send an email. Um, that's the email address there. Please bear in mind, we have three clinics. We are extremely busy. It may take us a couple days to answer an email, but we will answer you. So don't worry about that at all. We don't require a referral to be evaluated as a patient. We see patients from all over North America, New York, Texas, Minnesota, Michigan, Nashville, Florida, we've had patients from almost all over the entire United States fly in and have these treatments done. 
We accept all patients for evaluation, but not every patient is a candidate. Not every patient passes our criteria. So that's why we do a free initial determination, okay? Two appointments are required. The first appointment is completely free. It's the evaluation. They'll examine you, fill out your case history with you, take x-rays of you, look at your blood work and determine if this might be a potential help for you or not, determine if you would be a candidate or not. The second appointment is typically the actual procedure. The procedure is about a 30 minute appointment and three minutes of it are actually the injections. 27 minutes of it are your blood pressure, checking all that kind of stuff. Just make sure you're healthy that day. The procedure is simple and it takes next to no time at all. We do have a waiting list. Unfortunately, we have so many patients wanting help. Um, if you call the number, they'll put you on the list and we'll find out when we have an appointment in the future for you. But please call as soon as you're able because those appointments fill up really quickly. We're a few weeks out as it is, but we'll sure get you on the list. We care about you. We're trying to help everybody that wants our help. We will do our best that we can for you. Let's talk about cost. We had to look this stuff up too because uh, we didn't know what the cost should be. In America, the average single injection procedure, one therapeutic joint injection procedure, is between $7,000 and $10,000 per procedure. Obviously, I think that's ridiculous. I, that's just absolutely asinine to do that. We do not recommend doing these procedures outside of the United States for two reasons. Number one, the FDA is protecting patients and doctors and clinics in America. The FDA is not in Mexico, they're not in Colombia, they're not in Belize or Guatemala or wherever. They are only in America. There are over 700 clinics in America that offer this type of procedure. There's no reason to go outside of this country. So whether you go to us or some other clinic, there's no reason to go outside the country. Number two, they got really brilliant and started charging Americans all kinds of money for this procedure because most Americans don't know any better. That's why education is such a key to this, okay? There's no reason not to educate yourselves as much as possible. That's why we encourage questions and answers because that's educating our patient base. So do not do this outside of the country. There's no reason to. This is what we charge for a single therapeutic joint injection procedure. $39.95 for one joint. So if you have a bad shoulder, one problem, that's the cost for it. If you have a second problem, like a shoulder and a hip, and you want both of them treated on the same day, we only charge a difference of $2,000 to do the second procedure, okay? So every procedure done after the first procedure is just $2,000 when they're performed all on the same day. And we have different options for these procedures as well. One of ours is a single injection. One of ours is three injections spread out over time. It's up to the patient to determine which one they want to do. You all get to determine that yourself, but we do have options. But this is our procedure cost. We have to charge something to be able to afford to do it, but it's just ridiculous to charge the kind of money that clinics around the country charge. I don't agree with that and I hope you don't either. Some of these procedures are actually covered under Medicare and major insurance. For instance, a few months after we perform a therapeutic joint injection in a knee, for instance, you have the option to do what's called a visco supplementation injection. That's kind of like injecting WD-40 in the joint so it keeps moving and lubricating well. That's covered under insurance. So we've tried for years years, three, four years now, to try and get people help for coverage or insurance coverage. We finally figured out a way to be able to get some help for our patients, okay? So these are our options. We have payment plans, we have financing available, we'll, we'll bend over backwards to help you. If you want this procedure and you're a candidate for it, we will help you in any way we can. But we'd love to be able to provide options for our patients. It's up to you to decide, it's your body. For watching this webinar or listening to this video, we do offer a $250 coupon. Please, when you call for your appointment, tell them, I watched the webinar or I watched the video, I wanna get the $250 coupon. 
and they will give it to you. And you can use that $250 towards the cost of an injection if you are determined to be a candidate. Okay, so keep that in mind. There's a $250 coupon for watching this video. For educating yourself, you earn $250. That's why we do it. Every once in a while, we have patients that want to see where we got our data from. So I have all our citations and references here on the video. You're welcome to look them all up if you like. That's what they're there for. This is why we do what we do. This gentleman, he's a big gentleman. You know, I'm, I'm a big person. I'm six foot two, 220 pounds, right? I look small compared to him. But he had two really bad knees and two really bad hips. The problem was the doctors operated on his lower back. They didn't look at his knees. They didn't look at his hips. They just operated on the lower back. And of course the operation failed. They went in a second time and operated. This time what they did was they implanted one of those uh, battery packs and they're supposed to be a pain blocker type thing. They shove these wires up your spinal cord and then they actually put a, a battery pack and sew it into your butt cheek. Yeah, you heard that right. A battery pack in your butt cheek. And it's supposed to block the pain signals in your lower back. Now, bear in mind, if, if all they're trying to do is block the pain signals, that's not actually fixing the problem or fixing why there's pain. They're just trying to block it. I've been in practice for 23 years. I have never once seen that procedure successfully work. And unfortunately, once they put that in your spinal cord and the battery pack in your butt cheek, if it fails, they can't take it out because you can't pull those wires back out of the spinal cord and rip everything apart. So you have to live with it. So this guy came to us. We found out he had two bad knees and two bad hips. Well, if problems below cause problems above, having bad knees causes hip problems, having hip problems causes back problems, maybe we should look at the hips and the knees. So that's what we did. He received injections in both knees and both hips. He's holding his x-rays from his 90-day follow-up. Two months, two months after the procedure that we did, his doctor was able to get him off Oxycontin and Oxycodone. He just didn't need them anymore. Two and a half months after our procedure, the doctor, the orthopedic surgeon that put the battery pack in his butt cheek, they actually turned the battery off because he didn't need it to block pain anymore. The pain had gone. One week before this picture, he walked a mile through a cave in Kentucky called Mammoth Cave, a, a mile. Who walks a mile in a cave with bad hips and bad knees? Well, this guy did it a week before this picture. And he also got to tour that full-size Noah's Ark that they built in Kentucky. I wanna do that someday too. He spent seven, seven hours in a three-level building, a museum, that full Noah's Ark that they built on bad knees and bad hips one week before this picture. That is why we do what we do. Help change lives like we did his. When you come back to our clinic at the 90-day point, we're gonna evaluate you, but we're gonna ask you two questions. Number one, can we utilize your x-rays, your measurements, in the, in the case studies that we collect, can we keep your measurements so we can use those numbers? No one has ever said no to that. Everybody says yes. Number two, we ask, would you like to have a picture taken to share with other people? Every once in a while, we get someone that says, no, I don't want my picture taken. But most of our patients do take the picture. And we've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these. We will ask you those two questions at your 90-day follow-up appointment, I promise you. And we'll give you the opportunity to share your results with other people as well. All right, this is the, one of the last slides I'm gonna show you. This gentleman's name is Chris Kleist. That is absolutely his phone number. You can call him if you want to, he welcomes it. He is a 33-year-old security forces veteran. He had two really bad knees, really bad knees because of the job that he does in the armed services protecting you and me. That had tore up both of his knees. Look at him. He does, he's not overweight. He's not out of shape. He has muscles ripping all out of the place. 
but he had two horribly bad knees because of his job protecting you and me. The VA solution for Chris was to just cut out and replace both of his knees at age 33. Double knee replacement at age 33. Yeah. The, the bad thing is this, back in the 1980s, knee replacements used to last 20 to 22 years. That's how long a knee replacement would last. And if you made it 20 years, they would probably go back in and replace the knee again for another 20 years. With all of the advancements and all of the technology in medicine that we've had over the next 40 years, do you know how long knee replacements last nowadays? 10 to 12 years. What? They used to last 20 years, now they last 10 to 12 years? Why? Why on earth, with all of our advancements in technology, would something last less than it used to 40 years ago? Well, the reason is because we can do two replacements now in the same amount of time. It's double the money. That's why. And that's a very sad thing, but that's exactly why. So if knee replacements last 10 to 12 years, and if we replaced both of his knees at age 33, how many knee replacements would Chris be looking at by the time he passed away from this earth? That's right, four total knee replacements per side, which is eight knee replacements. And of those eight knee replacements that they would have done on him, how many of those eight would you and I have paid for? That's correct. We'd have paid for all of them. That's part of why Arkansas passed that Arkansas Emerging Therapies Act. We're trying to look for ways to save money on health care. Therapeutic joint injection is one of the absolute best ways to save money. It doesn't cause surgery and trauma. It's just injection. That's it. So I'm very proud of Chris, not only as a veteran, but for sharing his story. A week after this picture, he ran a marathon, he told us, uh, for, for something for charity. And this was his, his 90 day x-rays. This is why we do what we do. I hope that you've learned a little bit of something from watching this video. Um, it's, it's helped change my life. Um, I've avoided knee replacements now and, and I'm able to play golf and play basketball with my kids and do the things that I wanna do. We've helped countless people uh, at this point with this, these procedures. There are options for these procedures for the patient. We encourage you to call us, to ask questions, ask anything you like and we will help you find the answer. If we don't particularly know the answer, we'll find the answer for you. But we encourage you to ask us those questions. If we can be of any help to you or if you think this might be of benefit to you, please call the number you see listed here or send us an email. One of our staff members will reach out to you get in touch with you and see if we can help set up a free, completely free consultation. Okay, that evaluation consultation will determine if you would be helped or as a good candidate or not a good candidate for this procedure. We'll tell you that. If we can't help you or we don't think you're a good candidate, we will certainly give you our opinion and direction on where we think you can go next. So we will help regardless. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for sharing this video. If you have a friend or family member you think might benefit from this type of therapy, please share the video with them as well. Again, I'm Dr. Jeff Smith. I hope that you have a better afternoon or evening or day after watching this webinar video, and I hope that we can be a benefit to you in the future. Please have a blessed day, and thank you for watching.